this is my own practice. Um, we're going on second year now. Um, I think my what I'm doing is just really just building up my practice because we're starting from scratch. We're not attached to any health funds. Um, okay. So I'm just going to explore um, building up clients and also looking at like um, – increasing my skills in different aspects as well so that I can do more work. The things I'd like to focus on is actually um, braces, orthodontics, which is how I knew you in the first place because um, I did the yeah, study through um, POS group and then I saw your course and that's when I did it. Um, I think it's probably almost two years now. I think I think it's almost two years now. I was there. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> About two years. Yeah, I think close to two years now, and I think that that was really good because I think that that course really add a lot because I think I haven't done anything perio wise since high school, and all you were taught really was just cleaning. Yeah. So perio surgery was something that we never really taught very well. And I think that's, that was for the first time I actually appreciate the, um, the soft tissues. Because before that, you know, when, when you're looking at the problem, it's like, oh, this is too much, we'll just refer. And before that, I didn't even know that, okay, what can a periodontist do? So it's really hard to refer to them as well. So that's why I thought that, that was really good because it adds a whole, um, an, an aspect um, and once I've done that course, I realized that actually a lot of people were doing these things, like general dentists doing like crown lengthening or soft tissue grafting. And I thought, yeah. And once I've understood that, um, it's actually, it's not just the soft tissue management. It's like other things that I'm doing, like extractions and things like that. It's a lot better as well. Because you have an appreciation of like what's happening so I still want to continue doing that because the, um, I think it's going to add to the um, what I'm doing um, with the um, with crowns or onlays and things like that. I actually do a lot of what Pascal is um, is mentioning. So a lot of time I elevate a lot of the margins, but there was times when I look at it that yeah. Having to think about it now, I said maybe it would have been better with cram lengthen. It's simple. <laughs> the, um, it's the simpler. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily it's just that sometimes it's I can get away with most of the things, but the um, there was time when I found it really hard to put matrix around the tooth and whatnot because it was just once I've removed the thing, it's um, we're right onto the bone level, so you can't you can't put matrix between the bone and the tooth. So sometimes the, um, I find that that's, that was the, um, would help, would be helpful to do that. And actually recently I've done one um, functional crown length thing. Um, I haven't shown you this yet, but I think I posted on the, um, the Facebook, the pre-op, and I asked you about the, um, what to do. So I've actually done it and I'm still reviewing it. Um, I'm not sure, like, do you know how that I can actually share my screens? Yes, you can. Go to the bottom of the screen, and it yeah. says share screen, and then you pick the window that you, that is, um, I'm sorry, I did not have lunch. Do you mind if I munch during a, during a discussion? Yeah. Do you mind? Pardon? Do you mind if I munch on something while we no, talk? No, no, because no, I didn't have my lunch. Time. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wait, where's the chair screen? Oh, at the bottom. Yes, I can see yeah. that. It's a green button. Okay. Can you see it now? Not yet. No. Oh, okay. Not yet. Now I can see. Now I can see okay. your screen. Okay, good. So that's her that I did the crown lengthening on. Um, so that was her. Okay. Let me just get the, um, the x-ray first. That's probably the best one to explain. Um, that's, that's the issues. Is that the, um, she had root canal done. And we're looking at doing an onlay crowns on that tooth. And the, um, the margins on the distal was quite deep. 
Can I stop you for a second? Yeah. You tell me how you can do this without chronic thinning. With, no. with margin elevation. I, how are you going to isolate yep. on the bone level and build up with composite? How is that going to work? I would no actually, in, it's yeah. possible, but, but how, how, how do you foresee it? I don't see... I it don't think it's practical. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I will put rubber dams on. Usually, I'll probably split the dam between the, um, the pre-molars and the, um, the molars. And then it's just a matter of just getting matrix on. And once you've got the matrix on, I need to make sure that I can wedge it hard so that there's no fluid seeping through the, um, the matrix. And it depends. Most, most of the time, I can do it. There was time when it was really difficult. Um, I find a lot of the time, a lot of the time, if the margin is already deep like that, has been there for a while, there's already a little bit of bone um, recession. So there's a little bit of room to do that. And as long as I can get the matrix in, and wedge it, and the, uh, make sure that everything's clean. I say blast the, um, the tooth, make sure everything is all clean before I seal it. So I pro follow the protocol. Um, it can be done a lot of the time, but sometimes it was a little bit more challenging than the other. I had an issue with one of the patients the other day because it was the last tooth in the mouth, and the clamp of the rubber dam is on the tooth, so it's hard for me to get the matrix around it. Where's like um, the tooth that's a little bit further towards the front? Oh, it's, one of them. it's not as bad, but I thought, you know what, with this one, let's do it. I thought I said, like, let's, let's do crown lengthening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. This is like, why not? You know, the, um, try something different. And the, um, it was quite interesting. It actually, I learned something from it as well when I was doing it. Um, and anyway, with these ones, like the one behind it, you can see that you had the deep fillings on the distal of the three six as well, and you can see there's some calculus build up there. So I thought, yeah, this is the perio issues. So I thought, you know, you, if you're going to crown lengthening around this area, you probably can do the one behind as well. Because in the future, if I need to do a crown on lays on that too, then it's there. And if it's not, then the patient can clean better as well. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, when you mentioned about the, um, doing the crown lengthening, I went back and I looked at the design. Actually, <laughs> I probably changed the design a little bit. Okay. Because I was thinking that the way I'm doing my, you can say the, the, um, the occlusal coverage is I usually just do onlays. Um, let me show you some pictures of the ones um, I did. Mm, okay. So you're seeing like some of these two, when I'm actually elevating the margin, yeah. I've actually, I've got the matrix to cover the whole, the whole surface. Even a lot, a lot of them are actually underneath the gum. Mm -hmm. And then I've blasted, I've bonded and raised the margin. So it looks somewhat like that when I bond the, um, the onlays on. Mm, nice. So as long as it's, it's clean, a lot of time I, I can manage it. And the um, taking the, um, the impression is not too difficult because the margin are usually well up. Even Pascal would say that this is probably a bit too much. Um, I'm just seeing, I'm just trying to see how my work goes. And like, would you have any issues with the patient? I've been doing this for about, two, three years now, and haven't really had any issues with the patient. And coming back, I look at it, it's still there. But again, so it's like I'm still young, so I've only been doing this a few years. So I'm just, okay. I want to see how, how long-term things are doing. Okay, good.
Good. You're doing a good job. So you didn't do quantum infinity. Here you did a, a margin elevation, basically. Mm -hmm. So, so there was no chronic thing done, only a margin elevation. <coughs> um, no, but that, that was a different case. <coughs> okay. a different cases. Now, this case, I did the um, the crown lengthening. Let me find the photo. Uh, just a second, Dr. Super. Give me a second. Yeah. Yes. Show me. Yeah. The reason why I told you about that it was just to give you the idea that most of the time I do bonded porcelain restorations. So that means which that I good, don't... Which is good, but you don't need the ferrule effect. Yeah, that's right. You don't, so you don't need the ferrule effect, case. so you're saving a couple of millimeters. Yeah. Now, with this case, the, um, the pre-molars, you've got the deep, deep um, margin on the distal, but not on the mesial. That's why when I designed the um, the crown lengthening, I didn't extend it to the um, I didn't extend the bone reductions onto the mesial. So when you think about it, it's almost I'm designing the um, the crown lengthening for the three six. So you get the bone reductions and the um, the gum reductions on the mesial and the distal of three six, which will allow me to do the onlay on the three five, and also get the benefit of the um, Perfect. Yeah, the um the exposed exposed margin on the distal of three six as well. So I even though like, very good. yeah, so we even though we're aiming to do it for the purpose of putting the onlay on three five, it looks as if we're actually doing a fan lengthening around three six. Okay. Yeah, and I'll show you the um the photo. So that's the um the photos as I was doing it. I found what's the challenge with it. <laughs> Okay, because you know how like when you outline your step, when you do a crown lengthening, you're, you're doing a crown prep first and got the provisionals in there. So when you're doing a crown prep, it's a lot easier to access interproximally because when you're doing a crown prep interproximally, that means there's a, there's a big gap between two teeth. So that there's, you no can contact. there's no contact. There's no contact. Yep, that's correct. So that you're, you're, you can go in there and remove bone interproximally really easily. Now I didn't do that because this is going to be an onlay, it won't be a crown prep. So I have to work um, from the buckle and the lingual aspect. And that's what I find is very challenging. So having a look at it to see it visually and get access with the burr as well. So that's, so that's what I learned. <laughs> now, let me give you some advice here. You yeah. see, although you're not planning reduction on three, five mesial, yeah. You can still reflect the flap. No, I did. You did. So you reflected yeah. between the two premolars? Yeah, I went from the distal of um, 3, 4, all the way to 3, 7. Perfect. You did well. You did well. Yeah. I just that, didn't that's remove, only for access. Yeah, so I, I just didn't remove any gum around there. I just run it through the... Um, let me see if I've got other photos. So that was me trying to take the photos of like the, uh, the tissue reductions between the, on the lingual, it's actually made, <laughs> that, that was really difficult for me to get the, um, the reflections on the, um, the lingual. And I was a little bit concerned about, you know, how they said that there's lingual nerve down there and you, you want to avoid um, reflecting the flap very far down on the lingual. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me uh, tighten this point. Yeah. There's no problem reflecting a full thickness flap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't be concerned about that. That's actually okay. As long as you go full thickness, because yeah. the lingual is going to go, I'm going to kind of draw on your picture. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take here. Let me draw on your picture. Okay, so if you go full thickness, full thickness, yeah, okay, like that, and even I'm not sure if this is a third molar, but you can even go on top of the ridge somewhere here, yeah. reflect full thickness. There's not going to be a problem because the actual nerve in the soft tissue is going to be in the soft tissue somewhere here, and then going to the tongue. In the tissue. Yeah. 
So I don't, I don't see that there's a problem reflecting a, a full thickness flap. Quite the opposite. It'll give you more visibility, and you need that because you, you, don't, yeah. you don't have the luxury of no contact point, like a full coverage crown. So you have to work from here and from there. And then that's where hand, hand instruments are very important. Yep. You with me? Yep. Let me go through some more pictures with you. So that's... Let me clear the, uh, the drawings here. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay, the... Um, so you yes. did well. You did, oh, oh, no, you have great access here. Yeah. That's good. I mean, you lose the papilla pretty much. You lose yeah. the papilla. Yeah. I find it like because the, um, there was not a lot of access interproximally between the fives and the six it's quite hard removing a lot of tissues in between. That's what I find difficult. Use so a I curette. Think, you yeah. can use a curette. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just uh, 13, 14, younger mm -hmm. goods. Just a curette. Go in there with a curette. That's it. Yeah. And I find that that process of actually reflecting and cleaning this up took quite a long time before I even get to, before I even get to the um, bone removal. And the photo is not very good, but I'm going to see if I've, if it's visible at all. But you can see that's, that's a filling. Yeah. Yeah. That's a filling right there. And, a, and the good thing is that when I'm actually reflecting on the lingual, I can see there's, there's a deficiency there. I can see where the deficiency was. Um, the issue with this one, okay, when I did crown lengthening, I'm not sure. If I've actually removed enough bone, I have a feeling I didn't remove enough bone. You, you probably left a little ledge. Yeah. You probably left a little ledge, which is a common mistake, and it happens to me sometimes. All you need to do is take the ocean bean. Do you remember what the ocean bean looks like? Yep. Or a straight chisel, and just towards the end, just chisel close to the tooth. Forget about the burr, because the burr, you don't want to touch the tooth, right? Yeah. So just use a chisel. Yeah. Because yep. it could be soft tissue granulation, but it looks like a little bit of like a, like a shell of bone. Yeah. So just use two hand instruments. That's, your, um, that's the key here. Yeah. But no big deal. You see, that's the nice thing. Super, yep. this is the nice thing. You are doing an onlay. And that's why, you know, you are... You know, you, you, you learn this for a few years now. You don't have to be like a dummy. Okay, and as you've said, I need four millimeters. I'm going to reduce four. You don't need retention and feral. Yep. It's, a bonded, it's a bonded restoration. All you're trying to do is get some of the biologic width. You need only actually two millimeters. Yeah. Makes sense. And I think you know what I'm saying because obviously you did that. So yep. you can be very conservative. And, and I like... I like this approach. I like this approach a lot because you're being conservative with your surgery. You're being conservative with your restorative. Yeah. So uh, I give you an A plus for <laughs> one of my oldest students. <laughs> okay. So that, that's on the lingual. The, 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 the flash is not very good, but that's, that's where it's the... Okay. Um, I can see. I can see. I can see that. So you got two millimeters uh, apical to that? I don't think I did. Okay, I just, okay. I so not enough. Because when I pick up the camera, the blood is probably gone everywhere by then. Okay. Okay, listen. But at least you understand the principle. Because yeah. that's actually an area that has access. Yeah. It has access. You can actually go all around it, blend it yeah. to the molar, blend it, you know, gradually blend it to the mesial without yeah. producing bone on the mesial, but just blending it in. So you know for next time. And you'll see it when you restore the tooth you'll see what happened right yes very good um, yes. the other pro I, the was, other there, was there a little perforation there i'm not sure looks like some type of tissue damage probably it's probably when i was reflecting right and retracting there's probably press a lot on the tissues from the other side you yep. see that you see the, the yep. circle Yep. Dr. Super, don't think that I don't see things. <laughs> I'm looking at every detail here. That is good. I'll okay. tell you what the... Um, 
I, I think as I go back, I didn't remove as much bone as well. And the other thing, this one, I, I found there was a problem is that when I'm, because you didn't, because I didn't have the, um, the exposed contact, I think when I try to tie the suture, it's still the, um, it's above, it's above the contact as well. It doesn't go through there in the contact. So, what, you know what I mean? So, so, like the, so, what type of, so what does it mean? What type of suture is that? No, no, just oh, the, um, the, it's, it's just the interrupt no, it's between the contact. Part of it is under and part of it is on top. Oh, I see. Well, you have it's to, you like have to pass the needle, needle, you have to pass underneath. You have to, yeah. no, you have to pass underneath. You have to use yeah. like a four, like a, a larger needle. Yeah. About, about, you know, kind of a, 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 um, a seven eighth curve that yeah. goes right underneath and come back yeah. the same way. Okay. Well, yeah. and that's why it's hiked up. Yeah. But it should recede down. It should recede back. Yeah. I've only got the, um, the review post-op for, you can see how that, that sits, the, the one side sits on top, the other wise it's, um, yeah. it's through the bottom. I see. Yeah. To be honest, I think this restoration needs to be redone anyhow. Yeah. It looks like the margins here are right here. Yeah. I think it needs to be redone. It's like over contour just to close a space or something. Yeah. That's the next project. And you know what? If you need to do it, then you, you redo it and you know you don't have to charge the patient again. Yeah. The um I'll go to the post op photo. That was week one. So you can see that that's Yes. Okay. And the um but the good thing is that actually the patient were quite surprised. She didn't have any pain. There's that's no awesome. pain. Yeah. That she, she had no, <coughs> no issues with it whatsoever. So that was the first week. And I didn't, I just told her not to clean around that area as in like interproximally just yet. But after the, um, that's a, that's a second week after the second week. You see some of the sloughing there, the gingival margin. Yep. You see this a little bit in here? Yeah. That's because of what happened there. If, if what I'm seeing is correct. But all you also see that the tissue shrunk. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not hiked up here. It's, it yep. shrunk down. Okay, yep. so no big deal. Yeah, and that's only work with a rubber tip. Yeah. Need to do a little bit of work with a rubber tip to make sure this tissue tightens up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then you could you can tell this patient that the filling needs to be redone also because it's retentive to plaque. Yeah, and then formation of calculus causing bone loss. Just to yeah. tell this uh, man or woman. Yeah, that that you know there's a benefit, there's a health benefit to replacing it. It's not aesthetics. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So that was her, but that, that was a few weeks ago. And the next time I'm reviewing her is the six week mark. So I checked the first week, second week, and then the next time will be the six week mark. Okay. So I'll be excited because the um after the second week so I get him I get her to use the um the interdental brush like TP. Okay. Yep. So I think that, that will the tissue will probably shrinks a lot but I have yet to see her because that's, that's probably in a coming up in the next few weeks. Okay. Yeah. So good, good. Salt water rinses, rubber tipping, TP brushes, you know, interproximal brushes. It should, it should look by, by six weeks. It should look pretty healthy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So there you that's go. That's, that's the, my latest one. <laughs> okay. Good progress. Good progress. Yeah. It's, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, it, it takes a few months. Yeah. What else you got? This is a friend of mine. He's pretty keen on the, um, fixing these recession. And I think it's a good candidate. I think it's just going to be a little bit more challenging for me because I've never done posterior grafting before like CT grafting. Okay. Well, you've done, done it in the front. You've done it in the front. Yes. I've done it to the front one. 
and this is sort of the upper left and the upper right side. And I think this is purely, I think it's the, um, the brushing because his cleaning is not bad. And they just isolate. It looks like a very good candidate for the, um, the CT graph just because of the, um, the papilla, papilla is well, pretty high. And the damage is really limited to the mid roots. Right, of these things. but, but, but it, it's a little bit inflamed. The papilla yeah. is also inflamed. So that yeah. gives you sometimes a false reading about the height. You mean the here? Be yes, you see the, this is the height of the papilla. Yep. Yeah. So technically, if this is the recession, you would say one, two, three, you can get this covered probably. Yeah. Okay, don't worry about this. The canine is actually short. He has short teeth. He has a, a, a peg lateral. This is a peg lateral. Yeah. And he has small size teeth. So that to me is not recession. To me, he has a little bit of recession on the premolars. That's it. Same yeah. thing with the other one. So, yeah, CT graft is good. You know, tunneling. Yeah, I think he should be. And if he's a friend of yours, why not? And, and, but I would work on his, his home care first. Do some yeah. cleanings, oral hygiene. Just because if you, if you operate like that, it's going to bleed quite a bit. And the tissue can tear. You do, you're going with split thickness, so it'll tear a little bit. And that's not good. Yeah. Okay. I think with the, um, this case, the, um, the two things that I'm co concerned about, okay, what's, what's putting me off the most in terms of CD graph is actually the harvesting. Okay. And I find like, you know how you taught the one incision technique and yep, then there's yes. a six cut inside. I find it's very hard to cut. Okay. After the first cut, it's very hard to get a proper cut or clean cuts of the, um, of the rest to get like a nice square piece harvest to come out. Are you changing your blades? Yes. Okay, you need multiple blades for that. Yeah. But I found that it's the, um, the axis, like you're trying to slice in between the layer. Yeah, yeah it's not easy. Uh, you, can, you can, instead of creating incision number three, you can use the periosteal elevator. Yeah. Okay, so that's not an incision. This is how you maximize the thickness of the graft. Yeah. And avoid the most difficult incision is actually number th actually number number two and three are the difficult ones. Yeah. Okay. I've seen some people like I'm not sure I think you probably know um, Lincoln Harris. Yes, of course. Yeah. When he harvests that he actually he took the whole squares out. He doesn't Yes. I know. I asked him about that. Yeah. I, I asked him about that actually yesterday, and I said, "Why are you doing that? Why don't you, if you want a CT, harvest a CT? Because then you're left with a big hole." Yeah. Because think about it: if you're harvesting a CT graft, the ideal thickness is probably around two millimeters. Yeah. Plus, the epithelium gives you another millimeter. This mm -hmm. patient's gonna have a big hole in their palate for 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 three weeks. Yeah. So, so I think it's worth the effort. Now, if you're harvesting from the tuberosity, okay, that's different. And he says, the, his answer to me was, these grafts are more stable in my hands. I'm like, okay, thank you. I'm not saying it's wrong. But don't, don't, I would say, I would tell you, try both. Yeah. For this patient, do one side CT, one side free gingival graft, remove the... Epithelial layer and then decide. Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. But if you're saying that if you're doing the, um, you take off the epithelium as well, it's tend to be a little bit more uncomfortable, yeah? Like that when you're doing the free gingival graph. Well, you go deeper, I would think. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's just harvesting a free gingival graft, 1.5 millimeters, and carefully filling it, maybe, you know, I, I, he, he's very good. He does things that I have not seen before. He's done root coverage for implants 
with a fidget yeah. graph and covered on top. So he, he's, uh, he's for real. He's for real. I like, yeah. I like what he does. And he's, he seems like a very nice guy, very passionate about dentistry. Yeah. And a general dentist, and a general yeah. dentist with good knowledge. So, so that's good. So, you know, try both for this case. Yeah. Okay. You know, do, you, you know, do you understand the flap design also? Pardon? The flap design? The flap design for this one. Actually, you can go over that with me. That would be good. Okay, so let's do that. So we have two options. Let's see. Let's do the color white. I think white is going to work the best. So, you know, take the cursor off. Move the cursor away from the canine, the, ma the mouse. Okay, good. So I would start the following. From line angle to line angle. From line angle to line angle. Sorry. Okay. Line angle to line angle. Same here. So one tooth, okay, also on the, on the molar. Here you have an option. You can keep it simple, straight across, straight across. Keep it simple. That's one option. The other option is you can make it like more triangular. Okay. Questions. Are we looking at this as a conventional or are you are talking about tunneling? No, 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 no. We're not talking about tunneling. This is conventional yep. split thickness flap. Yep. Split thickness yep. flap. Okay. Conventional yep. CT. Yeah. Or CT. Okay. That's it. That should be enough. And then you release it all the way beyond the mucogingival junction, which is around here. Yep. And then you mobilize. This tissue moves here, here, and from here it moves here. And then you suture it with sling sutures. That's the simplest way. I recommend every dentist starts here. Don't start with tunneling. Don't start with pinhole or vista or gumdrop yeah start with that okay then you can always do the tunneling okay so tunneling works different okay it's tunneling tunneling from a coronal to apical direction and this whole area this whole area gets tunneled that's done, including under the papilla, under the papilla. And then it needs to be tunneled uh, here as well. Area, is that the um, split thickness? It's all full thickness with tunneling. Yeah, okay. Tunneling is full thickness, okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's what I would do, meaning you already did a tunnel for the previous. Remember the complication case? I think yeah. you did a tunnel. Yeah. Okay. Listen, you got to try different ways. Try different yeah. ways. That, that yeah. was an amazing case. Try different ways. Yeah. So question all is a learning experience. Yeah. So when you're doing the, um, the split thickness, okay, the, um, so you're actually doing coronal, sorry, yeah, coronal reposition flaps? Correct. So if the, um, the papilla here is quite long, so you, okay, right. you remove part of this and then reposition it this way, yeah? Well. So just de the the, um, the the tip here. And yeah, then, you, yeah. you make You do this. Okay, so this yeah. part here, this part here, gets the epithelialized. Yeah. And then it can be pushed on top of it. Yeah.
I have the um these questions because that that that's my feeling, but I'm not sure if it's necessarily the case. Is that when you're putting the um this the CT graph underneath this, and then you reposition the um the flaps, but if the epitheliums around here doesn't come all the way up towards the um where you want it to finish, would it in the end it's like will actually recede back? It's like, do you need the epithelium to cover the CT? Because in the end, the connective tissue, it's, it's underneath layer, isn't it? It doesn't have the epithelial cells. No, the, this, is how it, this is how it works. You, you suture your CT separately, right? Yeah. Sometimes you can't cover the full, the full, the full amount of the CT. So you can leave it some, somewhat exposed. It's still vascular. It still gets vascularity and it yeah. survives and it will develop an epithelial layer. You will never have connective yeah. tissue exposed. Yeah. But I it thought will that always have some migration on top of it. Yeah. But I thought the process is that, okay, you can't have CT. It won't be CT tissues exposed. But what will happen is that it just dissolved away and then your, your graph goes back to wherever your epitheliums actually managed to cover. Right. I mean, not all grafts are successful. Yeah. Right. That's why I encourage to cover as much as possible. Yeah. Even cover on top of the enamel. Yeah. And that's it. And then, you know, it may recede back, but may recede right to the CEJ. Yeah. Okay. I would give it a try. Yeah. And you're saying that you're raising the flap from the extending from the mesial of the, um, the three to the mesial of the, um, the six. Yeah. But you, you said like, let's still of the six. This still of the six. This oh, still of the six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you only want to graph around here. Yeah. That's, that, that's the amount of tissue you can harvest. You can harvest yeah. more than that. Okay. You'll get lucky to get this big piece. You'll, You'll be very thankful if you had a piece that goes from that goes from hopefully here okay if you have this this amount of piece yeah that would be that would be great so it'll be sutured to here. Will be sutured to here. Will be sutured here. Yeah. And then the flap covers on top of it. Yeah. Do you need to suture it? You don't need to suture it apically, right? No, no, not at all. You don't want to. And there's nothing to suture to anyhow. Yeah, correct. What what are you, what are you going to suture to? To the periosteum. <clears throat> you want the forces in grafting to be in a coronal direction. Yeah. Everything coronal. Everything is top. You don't want to have yeah. anything, any forces pushing it apical. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, so how's the family? Uh, it's good. I got married um, end of last year. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Any kids? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for all the support and the nice testimony. I'm sorry that I constantly called you Dr. Super from Sydney. Did you see the, did you see the campaign? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. You know, I think it was very successful, mostly thanks to, you know, testimonials. The testimonials yeah. were really powerful. Yeah. And we're coming up now with a new, a new course. Yeah. The Implant Gold Rush. So okay, it's coming yeah. up. Yeah. That's, I don't know how, how this is going to go cause the, um, because I'm still quite young and I have to try to focus my effort on doing certain, certain aspects of dentistry first. And implant is one of the things that I'm still leaving behind. It's because I Why? find that in my, Why? in my area, there's not a lot of demand for it if I offer it a lot of people would choose other options rather than implants. And I knew that I have a, I, I'm still learning orthodontics and I'm getting a lot more clients um, needing orthodontic works. That's why I focused my energy there first. 
because I'm still learning there. So I've only done it for about two years. So I think it's just a matter of, of me like going through different disciplines. So like right now I'm focusing on orthodontics and also the imperial surgery as well. Because I find that with, with implants, like if I can't do this soft tissue management wealth and things like that, patient's going to come in with the upper central issues and then it's going to be a disaster if I don't, if I don't master these techniques first. And I see okay. that. Yeah. May I tell you my opinion? Yep. You can cross train. You can cross learn. It doesn't mean that you now have to focus only on implants or only yeah. on ortho. Yeah. But you, you need to look at dentistry not so much as in like in boxes. Yeah. A box, ortho box, peri box, imprint box. Yeah. It's all one box. Yeah. Okay, let's stop the share for a second. Can you stop the share? Yep. <clears throat> Just uh, on the bottom, it's a stop share. There you go. So don't look, don't look at at oh don't sorry what share. happened there no just stop you sharing again just stop the share one time on the, on the top okay. it says yeah. stop share yeah. there you go so don't look don't look at uh at, impl at uh at all these different topics as i gotta master this then i master this then I, it's all together it's all yes. together and if there's no demand for implants create your demand because your patients where you practice are missing teeth. Yeah. They're missing teeth, period. So yes. you, you create something called the Blue Ocean. Have you read the book, Blue Ocean Strategy? No, nope, but I've heard about it. Read it. Yeah. That's what you need because if, if you tell me that there's no demand for implants in your area, that tells me that there's a great opportunity because the patients in your, in your vicinity are missing teeth. Yeah. So, so that's, what, that's, I think, a, a, is a very good focus. At least start, start by learning the theory yeah. and understand, understand the, just kind of the sequence of what it takes to replace a tooth with an implant. What's the big picture? Get familiar. And I think the videos that I sh I'm going to share are going to be very helpful. Yeah, What's the sequence? Good. Start to finish. And then you'll see that it fits into an orthodontic treatment plan. Uh, you'll be actually learning ortho is such a huge advantage because what's yeah. going to happen when you deal with the aesthetic zone and you have a tooth that needs to be extracted, you can utilize orthodontic methods and slowly yeah. extrude teeth, create more bone and tissue, create a better implant site and, and, and you, you now have an unfair advantage over, over a competition. Not only yeah. do, do you know how to extract, replace with an implant, you also know how to utilize orthodontics to enhance your results. So, so you're, you're actually in, very, in a very good spot. So don't postpone that because yeah. somebody else will take this opportunity, yeah. in my opinion. Okay, no, that sounds good. Makes sense? Yep. Very good. What else? Any other questions? Last words. Last no. words. Not really, no. Okay. Is your wife also a dentist? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Very good. Yeah. Well, um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, no, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more coming up. Yep. And uh, are there any dentists in your community that, that may be interested in some of these courses and some of these um, trainings? I think it's, it's an individual thing because, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about it until I saw, I saw the course. And I remember on the first, the first hours at your course, like, it was very difficult. Like when you're talking about the terminologies, I said like, oh my God, this stuff that you heard about in uni, but you didn't get it time. You didn't get it then. And you didn't get it now until, you know, halfway through the first day or by the end of the first day, it's time to sink in. 
then so you get a lot more. But then I think it's, I think I find a lot of um, dentists will probably feel similar to me. Like when they look at perio, is that, okay, if they don't know a lot about it, they think they're not going to get into it, then that's not the aspect that they're, they're, they're chasing after. You know what I mean? Because like a lot of people, like as a general dentist, that, you know, they'll, they'll be excited to go to like endo course, crown course, porcelain course, that kind of thing. But they said like, oh, if they have to deal with soft tissue, it's something quite um, unfamiliar with them. And I think the other thing that um, a lot of dentists don't like about it is that, you know, like say, for example, grafting or crown lengthening, there, there's a chance that it won't work. <laughs> a lot of dentists don't like unpredictabilities. But, but, but isn't it the same for restorative treatment? It may not work. Probably, but maybe they're because they do a lot more of it and then they feel comfortable handling the issues, I guess. Right. No, I agree. I agree. You know, to each, to each their own. To each yeah. their own. There's, there's obviously some fear, there's some hesitation. Yeah. But, you know, you, you just take it one step at a time. Listen, look, look how long it took you. We're still training. It took you but two years. Yeah. And you're still learning. Yeah. You, that's why you are in a good position to get into implants because you're already starting to understand flaps. Yeah. I think the other issues I find is that like, there's not a lot of patients taking up on a lot of these things because where I practice is actually in a lower socioeconomic group. And, you know, I'm seeing cases, I ask you about it and, you know, sometimes you book the patient and they decide like they don't want to do it anymore for like financial reason. Like they're seeing recession around there so like you know what they say they can live with it <laughs> that kind of thing nothing you can do about it yeah nothing you can do about it so that's why i find that like there's not a lot of case for me to do it's like i'm seeing a lot i tell them a lot about it and not not all of them go for it and the um but, so that's why i'm seeing cases yeah it's good some of them decide to do it so i jumped on it You know, you got to just work your way up and, and, yeah. and you know, you got to be prepared for the patients that, that want it and need it and yeah. can afford it. Yeah. You have to be prepared for them because yeah. this, is, this is how it works. Not all of your patients, not all of your patients have financial restrictions. Yeah. Some do, some don't. Yeah. So, so you focus on the ones, I'm sorry, you, feel, you treat everybody the same, but you can focus on the ones that can afford it and they have friends and family that can afford it as well. So all of a sudden you get into a niche, a niche of, of patients that can afford your treatments. Yeah. You focus on those. Yeah. And you market to those and you do more and more for them. Yeah. I'm not saying don't treat people that don't have money, but you know, you gotta be, you know, you spend time and, and money to educate yourself. You now the doctors yeah. on our platform, they, you know, we have 180 people, they, you know, they spay, they spend, you know, a thousand dollars to to take the course. It's and, and it's actually com compared to the the benefits and what they 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 return. Yeah, it, it's it's quite it's quite affordable. Yeah, I have a lot of people from Australia actually. Yeah, a lot a lot of Aussies. Yeah, I think it's good because the thing is, there's not a lot of people teaching it here or teaching it well. So I think if you're, I think the three main courses that people heard about, it's probably yours. Um, Pat Allen's, but he doesn't come here all the time. And then Harris, um, Lincoln Harris. Um, okay. but he's, he's only like a handful a year as well. So he's probably seeing maybe 10, 15 dentists a year for, for this type of courses. So there's not a lot of demand, but if people are looking for it, usually there's these three that they, they saw. I'm not sure if you still come to Australia. I don't, I don't, not, not so much, but I do the online training. Yeah. But, you know, if there's an opportunity in the future, if, you know, if we can yeah. gather, you know, 30, 40 dentists, I think we can organize something. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I guess I called you at the right time. <laughs> yes. That's good. That's good. Yeah, you yeah. called me at the right time, exactly. Yeah. Before I stopped all my traveling. But uh, yeah. very good. Listen, Dr. Super, good luck with everything. It was great yeah. talking to you. Yeah. If you need anything, you know how to find me. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Yes. Uh, we're going to launch the new course. So
So yes. that's going to be the implant, implant Gold Rush. It's going to be actually broadcast live. Yeah. And filmed live. And uh, there'll be an announcement. There'll be an online component, an audio component. Yeah. Mentoring, live webinars coming up soon. Yeah. But we'll also have a live course in LA. So if you want to ever come here with your wife, make it a tax deductible trip to the United States. Yeah. And that could be combined with the course some, sometime in September, number one. Yeah. And before that, we are looking to find a new surgical master. Yeah. Okay, like, um, like an apprentice show. Yeah. Maybe you can be a good candidate for that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, I'll, be, I'll be like... Uh, like uh, Schwarzenegger or Donald Trump, and I'll say you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> we'll get like twelve. We'll get like twelve, twelve guys from all over the world, and we'll do like a little. It's like a competition, but more for fun. Not yeah. people with a lot of experience. For example, yeah. somebody like you can yeah. be a great candidate yeah. because you are, you know, learning, learning, practicing, making mistakes, keep improving. Yeah. And then we every week we eliminate somebody else. Yeah, that's, that's we'll eliminate somebody else, and then the winner is going to win, be the next surgical master. Meaning, he will come to you know, will you know, will pay his trip. We'll we'll give him the free course, you know, hands on. Yeah, and I think it's going to be fun. I think it, you know, it's obviously it's a promotional really thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll we'll call for candidates, but we, we'll do stuff like that, and you know, it's all going to be online. Yeah. Okay, so then at some point, okay, we start from 12, 11, 10, we reach two, and then, okay, you're the next surgical master. Yeah, that no, sounds good. It's going to be fun, I hope. I hope we get some good candidates. Yeah, cool. Okay, my friend, listen, all the best. i got to go to work. Yeah, Keep same. up the good work. Yeah, okay, thank buddy. you. Take care. Bye. Yes.